Hi, this is Perry Marshall, and in preparation for the Truth Seminar, I want to talk to you about axis shift. Axis shift is a incredibly powerful way of changing the rules of how you look at a situation, how you present a product, how the assumptions that you make when you solve a problem, the, the very questions that you ask at the outset, which completely change the outcome. And what axis shift is, well, hey, everybody always looks at it this way. Everybody always assumes this rule and you say, well, we're going to take that rule out and we're going to insert a different rule. And in the video that follows in just uh, a minute here, um, you're going to see an explanation of the 80-20 curve, how it works and its significance and how it compares to the bell curve. So everybody's had bell curves. You, uh, you took a class and the test average was 77%. The instructor shows you how everybody uh, was above or below that score and how they clust around the middle. And 80-20 says, well, no, actually, uh, we're not going to use that axis. We're going to use a completely different set of axes. So, so the y-axis is how many people got a certain score. And the x-axis is what the score actually was. And we're throwing that away and we're saying, no, that's the wrong way to, to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to rank everybody from top to bottom. And we're not going to measure their test score. We're going we're gonna to measure their capacity and we get a completely different kind of curve that completely changes what we look for, what we see. Now, this is absolutely essential, and uh, those who are coming to the Truth Seminar need the they need to have this as background just to understand the 80-20 curve. But I want I want you to understand first and foremost that the 80-20 curve is an axis shift all by itself. And here's the truth. If you take one important thing, even a thing that most people have ignored or overlooked, they didn't really think it was very important, but you saw that it was important, and you axis shift, sometimes you can build an entire company or an entire career out of that axis shift. And every major innovation that's ever happened has been an axis shift. It's been somebody said, well, everybody thought this set of things was important, but actually this other thing is important. And what they did was they removed a set of rules and they inserted a new set of rules. And so what you're about to see in this video that's about to start playing is an example of that. And I want you to understand the content of that video. But first and foremost, I want you to understand that it is an axis shift. Hi, this is Perry Marshall, and I want to talk to you about the most important math that nobody ever taught you in school. Um, if you spent any time in school and took any number of tests, uh, you have seen a bell curve where everybody took the test, and these people got A's, and these people got B's, and these people got C's, and these people got D's and, and F's, and so on. And uh, anytime anybody talks about statistics and averages, they're almost always talking about this. And everybody's always talking about the average and, you know, whether you're talking about income or whatever. Well, this is the wrong curve. It's the wrong way to look at the world. And I want to show you a more powerful way to look at the world in a different curve. And um, this here is what I call the 80-20 curve. And um, it frames things just a little bit differently. And so, um, so in, in the bell curve, 100 people took the test and we measured how many people got 90, 80, 70% and so on. And the average was, let's say, 77%. And that's what everybody focuses on. But in business, you don't care about average, you care about the extremes because the extremes is where everything, act, all the productivity actually comes from. And so if we take this class and we put it on an 80-20 curve, 
let me explain what we're talking about. We're taking the least capable person in the class and we're putting them over here. And we're taking the most capable person in the class uh, and putting it over here. And what we're measuring is their ability, okay? So notice we're focusing on ability, not averages. And if you put this on a graph, it looks like a ramp that goes up and up and up. And as it starts to get close to this line over here, it goes up infinitely and it never actually touches. And this thing just goes higher and higher and higher and higher. And what it tells you is, let's say this is a science class, what it tells you is out of 100 students, one or two or three of those students have as much or more science ability than the other 97 put together. And if you're interested in hiring a scientist or getting a Nobel Prize winner or having a professor or anything else, all you care about is these outliers over here. And almost everything that you can measure in business is actually on this curve, not on this curve. Now, certain things like, you know, how tall people are does fit on this curve. But most things like the size of the files on your hard drive or the size of your customers or the sources of product effects or anything else, they actually go on an 80-20 curve. And on the 80-20 curve, you have the 80th percentile here where um, this is the top 20% and almost all of your action comes over here and, uh, and especially up in these extremes. There's a ton, there's a ton of power in this top 1%. Now, again, this is almost everything that you can measure in your business. Almost anything that goes into a spreadsheet is actually on an 80-20 curve. Now, I want to show you an interesting application of this. If, if you've seen what I've shown you, you haven't seen what I want to mention to you right now, is that, um, and, and it's the question of what happens when you enter a market? How difficult is it to, going to be to go get customers? And so what I want you to do is I want to imagine that we are, uh, we are approaching the problem from this side instead of from this side. And uh, we are measuring the ease at which you can enter a market. And so what we're going to do, let's say we're, we're talking about a market that you are not in um, and you want to you go in and you want to sell something. Well, there's this really interesting thing you can do with the 80-20 curve and you can say, well, if I start from this side and I'm entering a brand new market that I've never been in before, then the 80-20 curve um, is measuring the ease at which you can go get a customer, okay? And what the 80-20 curve tells you is if you start from this end, it's going to be very easy at first to get, let's say, a 0.1% market share or a 1% market share. It says if, if you have anything new or different or interesting, there's always some low hanging fruit in the market that you can go shake off. Um, and and so, so getting a few customers at the very beginning is probably not going to be very hard. But as you go from, you know, 0.1% market share to 1% market share to actually making a dent in the market, the ease of entering that market goes way down, okay? And if we go from 1% to 5%, I mean, we're going from like here down to here, and all of a sudden, we're having to push a lot harder, right? And then we want some market, sh market share. So the further down we go on this, the harder and harder that it gets, okay? And this is something that a lot of people aren't really prepared for. It's like, well, we put this thing out there and initially we got this flurry of activity and people seem to be really excited about it. But man, you know, these people that buy the other stuff, man, they're not budging. 
And uh, this is really a rude awakening for a lot of people. Now, I'm just going to uh, spend another minute talking about another interesting aspect of that. Um, and, and here's what it is. Is once you get past here, you know, which is probably... 20 or 30% market share, once you get past that, you may actually find that it's pretty easy to keep going because you've overcome the resistance of the market. And, you know, really, anybody with more than 20%, 30% market share actually probably is getting pretty close to number one. And once you get to number one, it gets easy again. And that underscores the STAR principle, which is that you always want to be number one in a growing market. Ideally, what you want to do is when you enter this market, you want to enter it in such a way that you've actually redefined the market. That what you're selling has such a strong, unique selling proposition um, and redefines the problem in such an interesting way that when people switch from the competitor to you, they don't even really think of themselves, uh, they don't even think of you as competing with them. So like most people who use Uber or Lyft, quite honestly, don't really think of Uber or Lyft as competing with the taxi guys anymore because it's just such a superior experience. Like the, the taxi guys are in really serious trouble. Um, and that's because they redefine the market and Uber is the star business in that market. So, um, so this is immensely useful. It's called the 80-20 curve and it's featured in 80-20 sales and marketing. And you can go play with it at 8020curve.com.